Hello beautiful creatures, welcome back to Of Crafts and Curios. With Auckland, New Zealand back in lockdown, that only means one thing. Post apocalyptic fantasy creature! Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my fantasy fawn bad omen sign of the times character. After watching a number of great YouTubers in the doll community make fantasy fawns and satyr characters, I thought it was my turn to give it a go and I was really inspired by the like post-apocalyptic feel that Auckland has right now in another lockdown with all these torrential rains and flood warnings and then today as I'm recording this an earthquake and a tsunami warning so nothing felt more like the right time to do this than right now as everyone in Auckland stays inside and everything feels a little bit more like the end of times. So to begin this project I'm starting with a Laguna Blue doll. I really like her really circular eye mold because I know I wanted to do that big open gaping lights behind the eyes look. I'm just removing her hands and arms as I am going to take off the fins and webbing between her fingers with my Dremel off screen. So using a circular blade I just shaved down the fins and fingers and sanded them off after. Here I'm just using my acetone based nail polish remover. I'm sure it's going to run out soon and I'm sure I'm going to buy 100% acetone but it's still working and going strong so I'm just removing the factory paint so that she is completely bare and ready for her face up. I had hoped to get this doll out much earlier in February. I actually began it when New Zealand went into lockdown during Valentine's Day but this is definitely one of my biggest projects yet and I do the most body modifications I've ever done on a doll so it is a really long process but don't get disheartened if you did want to make something like this it is worth it in the end and there we go super easy now I'm moving on to removing her fishy ears because I'm gonna do horns on this doll I don't really need the ears there they're gonna only hinder me when I go to apply the hair towards the end of this project so I'm just carving them off with a exacto knife and because I am going to do a complete different hairstyle on her I'm just removing all of her hair so that I can remove the head pull out the plugs and have a fresh base to start my new hairstyle So to remove the doll head, because it is vinyl, it is going to expand in hot water. So I am going to fill a jar with some hot water and just let her sit in there for about a minute to a minute and a half so that the vinyl gets nice and squishy so I can pull it off without damaging the neck peg inside. After some gentle jimmering, I've removed the doll head and I can begin by removing the hair plugs using a pair of old shaving scissors. I just go in there, wiggle them around, ripping all the glue bonds open so that I can then grab the little clumps of hair and pull them out through the neck hole. And now that she is hair free, I can move on to building my armature wire for my Sator horns. For this part you're going to need a basic armature wire, some pliers and some clippers. If you don't have armature wire you could use gardening wire or maybe even unraveled paper clips. And here I'm just marking off the points where I'm going to insert the armature wire so that they align with the center of the eye. That way when the doll is facing any certain way the horns will be facing frontwards as well. Now to begin building your armature for your horns, you want to start with two equal yet way too long cuts of wire. This is going to give you freedom to trim down the wire to size when you're done, but also have enough wire to stick through the head and be able to manipulate through the neck hole. So I'm just checking the size here, seeing how much I'll be able to play around with once it's inside the doll head. And taking a pin, I am just going to pop some guidelines for my wire in. Taking the first piece of wire, you're going to take one end and pop that through the head down all the way until it pops out the neck hole. Once you've got that through and you've got quite a good amount coming out of the neck hole, you're going to take the other end of the same wire and shove that closely, but not through the same hole, down through the head and out through the neck. Once both ends of the wire is sticking out of the neck hole, you're going to twist them off so it creates a knot, which means the wires won't be able to pull out the top of the head. It's 
gonna look like a bunny rabbit at this phase, but you are gonna twist off the top of the wire as well to create a stronger, denser armature that allows you to shape it whatever horn shape you wanna go for. And then you're just gonna go ahead and repeat that on the other side of the head. Once that second wire is completely through the neck hole as well, you're gonna twist both sides of the head's wires together, creating a Y shape with inside the doll's head. This way the wires are connected and they won't rip out either side. You'd have to rip all the way through the doll head to rip off those horns. Once I've tied off that knot I'm just going to cut it down to size so it sits nicely inside of the doll's head and isn't going to affect the neck peg meaning the doll will have full mobility. The doll armature wire is complete you can trim it down to the size of the horns you're going for and move on to fleshing these out with epoxy sculpt. The most readily available epoxy sculpt in New Zealand is Millipart. I got mine from Hobby City and they only had this bright blue color left in stock when I bought it. I've never used Millipart before being a true blue polymer clay fan but unfortunately you can't stick a vinyl head in the oven to cure polymer clay so Millipart it was. A good tip for first time Millipart users is that you can actually mix this with water to make it easier to work with. I didn't know this when I started and I wish I did so I'm just giving you guys that shout out as Millipart is kind of crumbly and dense and hard to get a clean finish on. So having water like you would with traditional clay or air dry clay really really helped me with this process. I unfortunately didn't look up this fact until after struggling through the first horn. So the first horn is a bit of a struggle but after that things go way easier and I actually really enjoyed using Milliput. I just didn't enjoy it before I included water in my process. So the process to building up the horns is like any clay based process. You want to start with your basic shapes, get the right size and dimensions and then add detail well after you're happy with the basic shape. So here I'm just twisting down my horn, going for a classic tapered shape, thicker at the bottom, thinner at the top. I noticed at some point that my horns were too long for the look I was going for so I do trim them down midpoint through this process. I'm using some metal tools to help me out here because as I said earlier, I didn't know you could use water with Milliput yet and it was truly a struggle this first horn. But after some perseverance and a lot of water, I was able to end up with some horns that I was quite happy with the sculpt of. Milliput takes four hours to cure completely, which meant I had plenty of time to move on to the doll body. The doll that I had originally chose had quite weak joints, so I did opt to swap out for a different Laguna doll. However, the skin color is different, so I do end up painting the doll. To begin the doll modification on the legs, I am just going to mark off with a pen where I'm going to cut the doll legs off with my Dremel. I am going to be creating a bowed leg shape like that of a fawn. So close to the knee, I'm just going to cut off the calves and then I'll reattach them later. And with the legs detached, I can now begin to think about rebuilding that bow leg shape. So I push the knee of the original doll all the way back to create that arrow at the front and then I'll reattach the shin at a different angle to create a curve at the back of the leg. And now onto the armature wire, I'm taking a length of wire and twisting it together so it is a bit stronger than just one hank of wire. This is really where my armature wire downfall begins because I used my classic 450 glue instead of hot glue to attach my armature wire to the base of the body and the leg. This was nowhere near strong enough to hold the armature wire in place and I should have used hot glue like everybody else. But you know hindsight is 2020 and I would say to anybody doing this do not use regular 450 glue, use hot glue or even the millipat, place the millipat in the hole and shove that wire in, leave it for four hours and it's definitely not going anywhere. And while I was blissfully unaware that my leg armature wires were about to send me to hell and back, I sculpted out some wider hips and thighs because satyrs are thick as far as I'm concerned. And now onto these disastrous legs that were put on this planet only to cause me harm. As you can see on the first leg there's a clear crack right through the epoxy and that's because the armature wire was not strong enough. 
I did however learn from my first mistake and used Millie Putt to bond the armature wire to the leg and the body on my second leg. So this leg went a lot more smoothly, there was nowhere near as many lumps or bumps and the leg actually held on. There wasn't a single crack and I didn't have to reapply it like I did with the first leg. Here it's really obvious, you can see which leg was a struggle bus and which one was way easier due to that armature wire. So if you learned anything from today, I hope it is do not skimp on your armature wire, take your time, no shortcuts. Once all the drama of the leg was over, I was able to sculpt some little hooves for my satyr and say goodbye to the legs for now. Moving on to reattaching the head onto the body so that I could begin painting the body. Using cling wrap I just masked off the face as I didn't want to spray paint the vinyl. I was going with a grey undertone to really mask off all of that blue that was in her hips and thighs. To begin with I just sanded down the surface of the millie putt so that there was a clean surface for the paint to adhere to. And here is the spray painted body. It's not perfect which is no problem as it is just an undercoat and I am going to be painting over it. So to bring the body back to a soft whitey ghost grey, I'm using watered down white acrylic paint and I'm building up in small layers just on the torso as the legs are going to be covered with fur and just building building up until I'm happy with the overall result and colour. And here is the finished body. It is a bit patchy, but that's okay as I am gonna go in with some dry brushing later to add texture and some shadowing. And moving on to the legs, I am using brushed yarn wefts that I created myself out of yarn to create the furry animal hair texture for her legs. I'm just building up in small sections from bottom to top. This is to ensure that each new row of hair disguises the seam of the last. This part of the process was extremely time consuming and took about a week to complete from the creation of the yarn wefts all the way to the finished leg. So I don't have a lot of footage as it was really hard to focus on filming and gluing. But in the end I stopped at the hips and the lower back so that I could attach some thin hair to make the hair look as if it was coming out of her body, not in big chunky wefts. Before that though, I'm taking a toothbrush and I'm brushing down the legs with a little bit of water to create a smooth texture so that I may trim down the shapes so it's not as unruly and you can still see the bowed shape of the leg. And here's what one finished leg looks like. You can see that bowed leg architecture that's under the fur. You can see the muscle structures and it looks really cool and really still messy but a little bit more tidy. I did leave the hair a little bit longer than most do when they're doing a fantasy fawn because I did want that outgrown, apocalyptic, not getting your hair cut in months kind of vibe. So now moving on to the body where the hair grows out from the torso. I am taking this felting wool that a friend of mine got me because it's kind of that dense already brushed out yarn feeling but it's going to be much easier than as if I was to brush all this yarn out myself. So taking a little bit of glue I am just going to be taking very very small thin strips of hair and just brushing them with the glue brush into the body so that it looks as if the hair is growing out from the doll skin rather than you know a gradient of thick chunky glue wefts. Here you can see what it looks like. I am so happy with the outcome of how this looks. The felting wool worked perfectly and it does look like it's growing out of her body. And it's finally time to move on to the face up. I'm taking a light grey pencil to create some shadows. I'm going to go for a big hollow round eye. It's going to be very cartoony, nowhere near a realistic eye shape whatsoever. But I'm just slowly building up a lot of colour around these big circular eye moulds. This part doesn't need to be clean or precise, the messier the better almost. Take some water, smudge out that watercolour and just really create a sunken, deepen eye look. Between layers do be sure to use Mr. Super Clear though because you don't want to add water to a look and it smudge out your entire face up. And I just kept building and building that depth and that darkness until I was really happy with the spooky overall sunken eye look. 
because there's going to be no pupil or iris I'm going for a really yellow murky white of the eye and a kind of black chapped lip look because this is more of a cartoony less realistic doll I'm going for short triangular shaped eyebrows um, I do think she's looking very spooky and very apocalyptic at this point so just a soft brow shape and she's done so to complete the doll's face, I did just need to color match the horns to the face. I'm going to go for a kind of fade to black on the horns, starting with white at the base closest to the head and then dry brushing on some black paint to create some depth and really pick up the texture that is within the horn. I carried that dry brushing down onto the body to create some more texture to the creature. This also creates more story behind her skin, perhaps she's covered in ash, perhaps she's withered and old or not of flesh. I am so happy with how the skin and horns turned out. She looks incredible and so creepy and post-apocalyptic. Now it's just time to move on to her outfit. I didn't think a traditional top would be right, so I'm going for a beaded bra look using these flat-backed gems that I think are used for scrapbooking. I'm just going to do an under-bust bra, so not a full coverage, just kind of as if these gems were embedded in her skin in some sort of way. Adding these gems also allowed me to add in a third color into the color scheme of this creature. Although it would have been on theme for me to do a black and white doll for this kind of a post-apocalyptic theme, I think adding that contrast color of the shiny gold really elevated the color palette for this creature. Because I was having so much fun with the gems, I kind of created this harness look with a little bit of dangling down gems and a kind of stripy collar and of course a third eye gem because why not? At this point it was fair to say I am obsessed with these gems and I will definitely be using them again. She looks awesome and with a finished face it meant I could move on to the hair. So for the hair I'm going for a really textured look. I'm using some pre-textured wefts of nylon hair and I'm also using some yarn wefts that I created but I didn't straighten them so they still have the kink of the yarn. I'm not going to be going in a circular motion like I usually do. I'm just going to go straight across the back of the head as I am going to have to maneuver a lot of the wefts around the horns when it comes to the front of the face. I'm building up the wefts in alternating layers between the nylon and the yarn. This allows me to create a lot of layers of texture and varying lengths in the hair. As we said earlier, she's probably not had a haircut in a while, so using some glue and tapering in those different layers and textures really helps create this creature's story. Moving to the front of the head, I do want to build up some baby hairs, so I am going to be working in a lot smaller sized wefts. I'm also going to be adding in a braid that is going to wrap around the horn and back down the hair. As you'll see, I'm gluing the braided weft in a reverse angle to the rest of the wefts. That way I can easily cover 
this lumpy weft with another hair weft that is going in the same hair direction. That way it will disguise and hide the giant chunky gluey part. And now onto the other side of the head, I am just taking some brushed yarn that isn't wefted and gluing that down to create some baby hairs before adding the braid and continuing to build up the head in extra yarn wefts. I can't wait to get the second braid in because I cannot wait to see how otherworldly and post-apocalyptic she's going to look with her hair on. It's going to be so big and volumized and textured. And now to create the final middle part seam, I'm taking wefts of yarn and I'm gluing them on the reverse side, then flipping them over on themselves to disguise the underlying weft of hair. This is a really, really easy but achievable way to create a natural looking hairline. Doing these up against each other will disguise completely the underlying glue line and you'll only see this really natural looking middle part. It's easiest to do this with yarn weft hair. It's almost impossible to do with nylon hair because nylon wefts are always thinner. But the outcome for this doll with this yarn hair is really, really successful and I will be doing this again in the future. And this is what she looks like completed. Oh my God, she is gorgeous. But there are a few finishing touches I wanna add, such as a Plague Doctor mask. Nothing says coronavirus like a mask. So I'm taking some cotton fabric with some glue on the base to thicken it up and making this cute little mask based on an Etsy pattern, which I will link below. I was all about the dry brushing in this project I did dry brush the mask to add some ashy texture and color to it and I think this really aged the mask and looked like she had been through the apocalypse and the final touch of my mask was adding lavender and herbs to the beak of the mask like they used to do in the plague days she is looking so creepy at this point. I love the mask, but because more is more, I thought I would add some glitter to this look. So taking her hands, my Alma glue, and a black and gold glitter as per my color scheme, I'm just going to add some dark glitter to the ends of the fingertips on this doll to kind of look like perhaps she's been burned or there's like a pathogen on her. This turned out better than I hoped. I really, really like the effect. I think the fade from black to gray on her skin is really creepy. I think it ties in the dry brushing on the skin texture. And I also added it to her hooves as if she had been walking through something dirty and gross. And for a final, final touch, I thought I would create a velvet cloak because what's a plague doctor creature of the night without a velvet cloak? So here that is. I think she looks like this creepy, ambiguous, dark mess that if you saw out of the corner of your eye when you were walking through the forest at night or something, you would definitely get the spooks. And now it's just time to put her all together, put her coat on, her mask on, and see the end result. With this doll complete, this project is finally over with all its bumps and lumps across the way. So thankful that even though I completely botched the armature, this doll was able to be finished and it's really one of my favorite dolls I've ever produced for the channel or uh, before I even had this channel. She is so creepy and cute and just something different for me and I think she conveys the story I was wanting to tell about that post-apocalyptic feeling i know a lot of us are feeling especially in lockdown here in auckland and yeah i just think she's so cute i'm so happy thank you so much for watching along on this journey it was a rough one
I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who watches my videos. And if you liked this, please leave a comment, leave us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos this March with Mabon coming up, do hit subscribe.